Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. A new season brings us a couple of new operators to use, and this time we're going to do a breakdown looking at the first of the new additions to the game, Finca. This operator profile, we're going to take a look at her loadout, gadget, and how to get the most out of this new attacking operator. Finca is actually a member of the Spetsnaz CTU. Along with Lion from the GIGN CTU, they have been drawn into this separate unit, which is known as the CBRN or Seaburn, and this explains why their default uniform is that of a biohazard suit. As always, let's begin by taking a look at her weapons. She shares the same loadout with other Spetsnaz operators. However, she does have one distinct weapon that is uniquely hers, and that is the Spear 308. This bullpup assault rifle is lightweight and does 38 damage with a 780 rate of fire and a 30 round ammo capacity. Because she comes from the Spetsnaz CTU, she does use all of the Russian optics. Her next primary weapon will be the 6P41 LMG. This is one that she shares in common with Fuse from his loadout. It has a damage of 47, 680 rate of fire, and a capacity of 100. However, it is very slow to reload because it is belt fed. Taking a page from the Defender's Playbook is the SAS G12 semi-auto shotgun that both Cap Can and Tachanka have access to. It does damage of 50 with a capacity of 10. It's the only shotgun that you can put a silencer on, but you've got to get in close to do anything, and putting that silencer on would really knock the damage down, so I'm going to have a hard time recommending this weapon. For the handguns, she has the PMM with a damage of 61 and a capacity of 8. Overall, it is one of the better handguns in the game. It does have a lower capacity, but the damage is nice and high without the severe recoil kick of something like the Desert Eagle. Alternatively, she can take the GSH-18 with a damage of 44 and a higher capacity of 18 rounds. Secondary gadgets will either be breaching charges or stun grenades, and I'm going to go ahead and recommend the stun grenades as the loadout of choice because they do complement her ability so well, and we'll get to that in just a moment here. So Finca's gadget is that she has the ability to activate nanites that have been injected into herself as well as her team members. So when she's in the field, this is a global ability. When she activates this, it affects all of her allies at the same time. And it does several things. The first is that it grants a health overcharge of 20 hit points. So whatever hit point pool you have right now, it will give you 20 additional. If you're at full 100% health, you will now have 120 hit points. However, you will see that they are in kind of like this blue special pool. And when the time limit is up for the nanites, you do lose those. They are only 20 temporary hit points. They go away once it's over. The ability does last for about 20 seconds, and that is enough time to definitely get some stuff done. You can always tell when it's active because the edges of the screen will turn that obvious blue, letting you know that you've been affected by this ability. It can sometimes affect your ability to see things on the peripheral edges of your vision, so do be careful about that. Other interesting thing this ability grants you is the ability to revive players that have been downed. Finca's ability works anywhere on the map. There is no range limitation to it at all. So if you are on the complete opposite end of the map from a character who's been downed, if you activate her ability, that player will immediately be able to get back up again. However, there is a bit of a downfall with that. The player will only have five hit points if you do that, rather than the 50 hit points that they would have if you did a manual revive. This works regardless of how the player has been downed, whether that was through standard damage taken during combat or if they've fallen off of a roof. If they are in a down but not out state and can freely move around, around, then they are able to be revived in this way. This does not apply to players that have been into a frost trap or players that are being actively interrogated by Caviera. This does not rescue them from those two situations. So here we're going to get a look at what this is like when you fall off a building and get revived. Up in the upper corner there, my friend had his webcam going when he recorded and sent me the footage, so he asked me not to show that, so we've got that part removed. But you can see, falling off the edge here, when I, when I go over the side, he comes over and he gives me that revive. He's not actually touching me. Now, he is in front of me, and I'm just showing you what this looks like, but he could actually be doing this from the other side of the map. The distance does not matter. Finka's ability does more than just that, though. You also get resistance to flashbangs. So here we're going to take a look at this and see how it is. We're going to toss out a regular one, and you're going to see that when it wears off, it's going to be about the same time that Bandit here recovers from his flashbang effect as well. Now we're going to go ahead and see what that looks like when we use it with the overcharge ability, and we recover 
much faster, we do actually get a chance to see that Bandit is still in that flashed animation state, and we can take advantage of that and get the drop on him. Even though we've been stunned, we recover quicker. It's not just flashbangs that do this, though. You also get the same advantage with Concussion. She will resist any kind of concussion effects. So here we're going to have a player run in, and you're going to see the duration that you would normally experience a concussion disorientation for. It lasts a certain amount of time. Now I'm going to have that same player run in and do that, but this time he's going to be doing it while he's got his surge going, and as he runs in, he will still get hit by the effect, but it is noticeably reduced. And here we're going to take a look at this, what it looks like from the other end of things. So I'm going to run into this room. You're going to see me get hit by this effect, and I can get, you know, kind of a fair way into the room before this winds up wearing off, leaving me exposed and vulnerable. Now we're going to try the same thing again, but this time I'm going to have the surge activated when I do it, and we're going to rush in and see what happens. As you can see, I still get hit by the effect, but it wears off noticeably quicker. It's about half the time that that takes into consideration for it to wear off. And if you are running with Zofia on the squad, that will be reduced even more. So she's already got resistance to concussion grenades, but with the surge ability active, it goes off almost as soon as it comes on. It's only about a second and a half to two seconds and it's gone already. But that's not all of the advantages that this ability gives you. You also get recoil reduction. So take a look at this. We're going to do some test shots, and we're just going to just hold down the trigger on this. I'm not going to try to do any recoil reduction at all. This is just the natural recoil pattern that comes out under fully automatic sustained fire. So there you go. We're actually up off the truck and into the building. Now we're going to do it with the surge activated. And as you can see, our recoil pattern is significantly tighter. We have a much better grouping overall here. This gives you a significant advantage to your aim when you're in any kind of a gunplay situation while this is active. There's one final advantage that Finca's Nanites will grant you, and that is the ability to have a faster ADS speed. Look how quick this speed is. It is just lightning fast, and you can see that it's just, I mean, like almost instantaneous. When the effect wears off, she will then return to her normal speed of ADSing. And remember, this affects the entire squad. All of these bonuses, whether it was the concussion resistance, flashbang, recoil reduction, or this ADS speed, affect the entire team all at once. Now, originally it had been planned that Finca would be able to increase players' movement speed. This was something that, after testing, they found they didn't want to do because it turned some characters like Ash into just, like, incredibly fast players and made things just a little too crazy and they didn't want to go there. So there is no movement speed increase. Whether you are walking or whether you are sprinting, you will move at the same speed when you have the ability active versus when it isn't active. There is no difference at all in the movement speed. Same thing with moving through barbed wire. It was rumored that you would be able to move through the barbed wire quicker. Additionally, animations don't necessarily play out any faster when you're under the effect. You can see that when the ability is active, I have the same speed when I go ahead and try to vault over it then. Nothing's really changed there at all. So there's nothing that changes with the movement speed. The only thing that really gets faster is the ADS speed. Now, these are a lot of different advantages. So how do you counter them? Well, there's several different ways to do it. One of the most significant ones is going to be smokes gas grenades. The reasoning behind this is that when the nanites are active in your bloodstream, it is actually making you breathe faster. Your heart is pumping blood faster and harder, so you know, you're just like your body is going through more physical exertion. As a result, you will absorb the toxins in the gas more quickly and they will cause more damage. You can see in this example here, I've hopped in, I've taken some substantial damage, but I was able to get through it. Now with 40 hit points remaining, I try the same thing and it takes out the damage so quickly, I don't even have a chance to really get in there. Now, granted, I wasn't doing this at full health, but even at full health, I would not have lasted very long in that at all. Getting back to what we were just saying also about the heart pumping harder and faster, this is something that translates into an effect that Pulse can pick up on too. So you can see here the top of the stairs is where I'm first able to kind of pick up on that player's heartbeat. And then as they back off, I lose it. Now I'm going to go ahead and have them activate the surge and walk forward. And you can see that I pick up the heartbeat a little bit sooner. It's not a significant range increase, but it is a little bit. And it could make the difference in a situation when you're trying to scan through a wall and give you that little bit of extra range info that you might be looking for. 
Another counter to this is the Mute Jammer. This is a little bit more of an incidental effect though. This is hardly ever going to come into play on purpose. It's sort of, you know, kind of one of these things that just happens uh, sometimes on accident. But if you are standing on a Mute Jammer when you try to activate the ability, uh, it will tell you that the ability cannot be activated. You will also notice in the bottom corner there that the icon for the ability, it actually turns gray. It shows you when you come into range of that Mute Jammer, you just cannot turn it on at all. And so this is something that's important to know because one of the times where you might want to activate that surge is right before you rush the objective. And of course, if you're stacked outside of a doorway or a breach or something like that, you know, this might be where you're going to come into the range of a mute jammer when you're pressed up against those walls. And then you try to activate the ability before you rush in and you might not be able to just something to kind of be aware of. Bandit does not have a similar effect with his shockware. If you walk into this with your ability going, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't change anything. You can go right through it and it's not gonna turn the ability off or anything like that on you. Likewise, if you are standing in shockware, you can still activate the ability. It won't prevent you from doing so. But we still have a couple more counters to this ability. The first of them is going to be Echo. So Echo will cause an instantaneous cancel of the surge effect on that player if they're hit with his blast. You can see here what it looks like on my screen. As soon as I get hit by this, the ability turns off. I can't reactivate it. It's immediately on a cooldown timer. But also, it just creates a situation where even once the effect of the Echo Blast wears off, it doesn't pick up where it left off. It's gone. It's immediately canceled. Another player that can do that is going to be Lesion. So there's something about the toxicity inside of his goo mines, the, the chemicals that enter your bloodstream. When you step on them, they instantaneously cancel the surge effect that Finca produces as well. This is a great counter, probably one of the most effective counters besides smoke. And you're just going to be able to create those situations where a team rushes in. If they've all been hit with this surge as they try to hit that objective hard, they're going to have that effect canceled out immediately, in addition to leaving them vulnerable while they pick the needle out. So who does an operator like Finca pair up with best? Well, honestly, who doesn't she pair up with best? I mean, there's just so many advantages to being able to do this. Still, some people will gain more advantage out of this than other. A really good pairing that you can do is to go with Ying. So Ying has the ability to be immune to her own flashbang effects, but because you get the reduced flash effects with these, you can also follow in behind Ying and you might be blinded for a little bit, but you're still gonna recover faster than the enemy team will from those charges. So you've got that going for you. Anybody else that can throw stun grenades can also kind of take advantage of this. It's a little bit of a high risk, high reward situation to be sure because you'll both get flashed, but you'll definitely recover faster as a result of this. She also pairs up very well with Sophia for the same reason. Sophia already has the duration cut in half for the amount of time she's affected by stun grenades, uh, whether that's her own stun grenades or Ella's stun concussion mines. Uh, these are things that she's already going to receive half the duration for. But when she's got Finca's surge ability on, as I mentioned before, that cuts down to like almost nothing. She shakes it off within just like one or two seconds and it's just off. So that is a very powerful combination there. Any aggressive breachers are also going to benefit significantly from this. If you're coming down onto the objective and you want to storm that location very quickly, then your aggressive breachers, your you know people like Ash or anybody like that, that's your fast, hard hitting operators that move quickly are really going to be able to take some good advantage of that almost instantaneous ADS time as well as performance recoil control. But another class of operators that will be able to take specific advantage of this will be the shield operators. That ADS speed of coming out of the shield transition state will be particularly effective to be able to use. So when you've got a Blitz or a Monty and they're going to ADS, having that faster ADS speed, it's just going to be maybe enough to give them that extra edge in the gunfight that they would have otherwise maybe lost. So there you go, Finca brings some really interesting dynamics to the gameplay. She helps buff the entire team at the press of a button before they're ready to engage a situation that they know they're going up against, whether that's anchors in the objective or whether that's roamers that are pinned down to a specific location. Being able to give those advantages in a gunfight when you know one's coming can be enough to significantly turn the tide of any given gun battle. Now tomorrow we are going to be taking a look at Lion and his ability, the way that breaks down and how you can use that in different situations. So be sure to keep an eye out for Lion's operator profile and how best to use him. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Also click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as I make new content available. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.